today we're in Bangkok and we are touring the mighty markets of Chinatown. Thanks for watching. I'm Luke Walks, thanks for watching. Today's episode, I am at Talat Noi. Talat means market in, in Thai, and Noi means little. So literally, this district is known as a little market. So today's episode, uh, it's all about markets, and I'm exploring the mighty markets of Chinatown. Talat Noi is actually on the periphery of Chinatown, um, and uh, one of the main roads uh, at Talat Noi is Yawarot, and I am right here at the start of Yawarot Road. And behind me here, this mighty impressive arch, this mighty impressive gate here is called China Gate. And this marks the start of Chinatown. So we're going to explore along uh, Yawarot Road and explore as many markets as we can, both old and new. Um, and I also need to find my daughter a birthday present. So hopefully I can find my daughter a birthday present and also learn a lot more about the markets in Chinatown and have a bit of fun. So to provide some context, uh, this, this is season two of uh, a video series which is which essentially started out as an exploration of the Banrak area Ban, Banrak area uh, but then I've expanded to also include Sampan Tawong which is uh, where the famous Chinatown is when I started uh, digging deeper and wanted to learn more about Chinatown I realized one video wasn't enough so I've put together a couple of videos and this video here is, is all about the mighty markets of Chinatown. Now the last video I focused in a little bit more about the history of the place of this area. In particular it was an exploration of the uh, start of the Chakri dynasty with King Rama the first, Rama two and number three because that's when Chinese immigration and Chinese trade really started to increase. The video before that one was actually about King Taksin because it was King Taksin who uh, moved the capital of Thailand, which was Siam, not a Siam at the, at the time, from, from Ayutthaya because the Burmese uh, attacked and, and defeated the Siamese army and destroyed the Ayutthaya palace and city. So it was King Taksin who rebuilt the city in Tonbury, which is on the other side of the Chao Phraya River. After, and that was video, that's, that's, that, if you want to know more about that period of time, I've created a video about all about that. So I, I strongly recommend you watch that one if you're interested. It's a ripper. Um, so then after King Taksin, uh, King Chao Prayer, King Rama I, was the one who moved the capital from the Tonbury side back to oh, where it is now today, where the capital is now, uh, at the Ratakano, Ratakano, Kossin area, Ratakossin area. Oh, just a note, I'm new to Bangkok, so I'm learning, I'm learning about Bangkok, so I'm probably gonna make a few mistakes, as is what happens with a learning journey. And I'm probably gonna say a few things incorrectly, uh, but please bear with me, because I am learning. I am, uh, I'm learning about this magnificent city, Bangkok, so I'm bound to make a few mistakes as I make connections and start to build understanding. Anyway, so back to, back to now, so this period, the last video was about King Rama 1, 2 and 3. The video before that was about King Taksin. And the video before that, that's the first one in season 2, was all about the colonial period in Bangkok. And that was a focus on the colonial uh, period with the Portuguese. Um, and it was, the, it was around the uh, Banrak area. So, anyway, now I've filled you all in. Let's go and find some markets in Chinatown. Uh, just to be aware, this place is called Talat Noi, that, which means a uh, little market, but Talat Noi is not actually a, 
a market. It's actually the name of the district. Yellow Rock Road is approximately one and a half kilometers long. And it is loaded with markets and shops, in particular markets, uh, uh, and lots and lots of gold shops as well. So I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. Uh, but Yawa Rot, Yawa Rot, Yawa Rot, Yawa Rot Road is a fantastic place to get some Chinese food. Uh, plenty of places selling things like dim sum, uh, bird nest soup, and I don't know if you can still get your shark fin soup. Um, but if there is one place in Thailand to get shark fin soup, it's probably here in Yawarot Market. So China Gate behind me here is actually built on Odin Circle. So it's a kind of a roundabout uh, and it's called Odin Circle because right nearby here used to be a cinema which shared that same name, which is no longer here. Now. This China Gate is right at the start of Yawarot Road. Now Yawarot Road actually is a very curvy road. Yawarot Road was built during the reign of King Rama V. Now King Rama V uh, at the time instructed this road to be built and it's a very curvy road and the reason it's a curvy road is primarily because uh, the laws of the land at the time uh, wouldn't allow any buildings. Like if buildings were occupied by people uh, they wouldn't be allowed to be knocked down. So the Yarrawat Road was actually it was a very windy road, which uh, left, left left the uh, apartment buildings intact. Now it's so windy that it's actually got the nickname of Dragon's Road, which is kind of interesting too, because with uh, Chinese, if you've ever been to like a Chinese temple, you'll notice there's no straight, straight paths. And the reason this is, is because the belief is that the spirits cannot travel in around corners. So whenever you go to any kind of like uh, Chinese temple, you'll notice a lot of curves and zigzags. So I wonder if there's any connection there. That's part of the learning journey, I, I guess. I'm trying, I'm throwing a theory out there. I could be completely wrong or I could be close to right. Oh well, let's, uh, who knows? Who knows if that theory holds water or not? Now, another thing you'll see a lot in China or anything uh, closely connected to Chinese culture is dragons. So having a road nicknamed Dragon's Road is pretty significant because Chinese relate dragons with power, strength, and good luck. So a road that's, that uh, represents power, strength, and good luck, it's a pretty darn good road in the Chinese people's opinion. 1899 is when Yarrawat Road was completed, and that was during the reign of King Rama V. Now, the gate, which I've just passed, it's just out of view now, but the Chinatown Gate was actually built quite recently. In fact, it was finished in 1999, and it was to mark the uh, King Rama IX. It was, he was, it was his 72nd birthday. Now, in Thai and Chinese culture, that's a quite an auspicious uh, birthday because that signifies, so in the, with the Chinese uh, zodiac, they're in 12 year cycles. So the 72nd birthday means he just completed his fifth cycle and he was entering his seventh cycle. Hang on, hang on, that's not right. So if it was uh, King Rama IX's 72nd birthday in 1999, that means he had just finished his sixth. He just finished his, that means he just finished his sixth cycle and he was entering his seventh cycle. Uh, it is hard walking and filming and talking and uh, trying to do some basic maths. So please forgive me. Anyway, behind me is the famous Yarrawat Road. And this here Yarrawat Road, where we're exploring today, in particular looking for the markets here. And that's the Dragon's Road. So right over here, Oh, by the way, there's another important temple and we are going to be doing a Chinatown temple tour in an upcoming video. And then over here we have China, China Gate, the famous China Gate, which was erected to celebrate King Rama IX's 72nd birthday and it was erected in 1999.
Yarrawat Road and in Chinatown in general and the San, San Pan Tuong district. There's a lot of temples, so I'm going to be exploring them in greater depth in a future episode. Uh, but this one here in particular uh, is really noteworthy. It's not only the temple, but it's also a um, medical facility, a hospital, and it is called the Tian Fa Foundation. Um, so stay tuned. This is a future video, upcoming video about when, when I explore the temples of Sampan Tuong district. So you'll see a lot of amazing sights when you wander the streets of Yarrawat Road. But you'll also find some weird things like... I'm all into street art and I love art, but I don't know what this grill is all about. I don't know we've got, got this uh, sumo wrestler. I don't, can't understand why that's here. All these weird shaped legs. And then there's some weird clown. I don't know what's going on there, but I like it. Okay, I've been walking down Yarrawat Road for about uh, five minutes, and it didn't take me long to find lots of places which serve shark fin soup and bird nest soup. So if that's your kind of thing, then this is the place. Now, uh, re speaking, speaking of food, Chinatown is really famous for its food. Uh, and there's loads in the nighttime, there's loads and loads of street food available. Uh, I'm not going to be exploring that in this video, but there will be an upcoming video uh, which explores the dining in Chinatown. <coughs> One word to describe Yarrawat Road lively. Hello. Certainly is lively here, and this is daytime. In nighttime, it's actually it's chaotic because all the food stalls come out here on the road. So that's going to be a future episode when I talk and explore, take you on a tour and explore all the food options around here in Chinatown. But I tell you one thing, um, I'm I am getting hungry as I wander the streets here. All this magical food that's being set up. So. I might grab a little bit of a snack. I might grab a little bit more footage. There's a couple of gold okay. shops I want to check out. I've just noticed this loads. This is loaded with gold shops on this road. So I'm going to do a little bit of research and, and try and work out, try and find a little bit of information about why there are so many gold shops here along Yarrawat Road. There's another one just there. Chin Hua Heng Goldsmith.
just to provide some context, I'm actually doing a tour on a Sunday afternoon. So a lot of the gold shops are actually shut, but there, there are loads and loads of gold shops. So I'm here when and the sun's just kind of going down as well. So this is just getting a bit cooler in the day. And this is when the street, street food vendors start to open up, start to wheel their carts in. So it's a nice kind of a transition time. There's over 130 gold shops in Yarrawat Road, on, along Yarrawat Road, or just off Yarrawat Road. So that's why there's another nickname for Yarrawat Road, and that is Golden Road. So we've got Dragon, Dragon Road, Golden Road, and Yarrawat Road. Now, uh, interestingly, the, the me unit of measurement for gold in Thailand is the baht. So the currency is baht, but also you buy gold in uh, measured in a baht. Now, here's a nice little picture here. Um, so something like this. So these little little pieces here. Uh, one baht, one baht of gold is about a thousand, uh, one one thousand two hundred US dollars. That kind of thing. So it's actually a kind of um, a really practical and accessible way for Thais to invest their money. Now you'll see, actually, it's uh, I've, I've noticed this a lot um, in my short time here in Bangkok. When the gold price, prices are low, you'll see loads of people lining up to buy gold and buying the, sm the small pieces. Wait for the bus to go. So you'll see people queuing up to buy gold when the price is low. When the price is high, you'll also see people queuing up to sell their gold. Now they can buy those little uh, little pieces. Uh, for either one baht or the two baht bullion and they, they often come with like uh, you know nice images on and things like that uh, and they're kind of easy enough to, to store but you can also have them made into jewelry as well now when it comes to the uh, buying and selling uh, you'll get a better price if you want a bit of a financial advice from me you'll get a better price if you have buy them in the baht uh, the, 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 the baht in a piece rather than to have them made into a jewelry so that's my little tip. However, having said that, I've never actually invested in gold, so probably I'm not the best person to take financial advice from. Uh, now, speaking of investment, uh, apparently the real estate here is some of the most expensive real estate in all of Bangkok. Uh, most of it is owned by wealthy Thai Chinese, uh, but uh, I would probably be able to afford a one baht of gold rather than buy a property so I'm starting to think about my, some investment opportunities and I've just made a decision so when the price is right I think I might queue up just like the locals and buy myself a little piece of gold and tuck it away in my sock drawer oh shit I shouldn't have told you that uh, all the gold shops here uh, put their buying and selling prices on the door, prominent places so you can see. Actually, speaking of finances, I do have a, I do have an idea. I was wondering if I actually bought my daughter a baht of gold. Uh, it'll cost me about a thousand to over a thousand dollars. And if I give her this baht of gold, I tell her it's yours, but you, you, you know, with the, with the idea and the hope that I'm actually trying to teach her about the value of finance. And again, she is only nine. She'd probably prefer uh, some Lego or a new iPad. Um, yeah, let me think about that one. I read an article recently about trying to teach, uh, you know, how to teach your kids about uh, finances. And it did talk about, you know, making some kind of investment. So I have been wandering around. I've actually given that a lot more thought. So if I was to buy my daughter, say she's gonna turn 10 soon. So if I bought her one bar of gold, every birthday from 10 to 18 and said she's not allowed to sell it until she turns 18 so she's going to have 18 baht's worth of gold uh, that considering that the 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 way gold prices go it'll definitely be worth more uh, by the time she gets to 18 and by the time she gets to 18 she'll then be faced with that decision do i sell it all and buy myself my first car or whatever it might be or do I actually keep it? Because it's actually grown in value over time. So I might give that one a little bit more thought, actually. Uh, but having said that, I'll probably have to, I'll need something to wrap up and give her on the day uh, that she can actually play with and have fun with. So uh, I might run it by my wife and see what she reckons. 
actually Chinatown is uh, well known for a lot of the knockoff products you can buy. So I could buy her some kind of um, fake, fake Adidas sportswear or perfume or whatever it might be. And this also could be a good financial lesson in life. Things aren't quite what they seem. You know, I know what's going to happen. I'm going to run these ideas by my wife and she's going to give her usual response. Her usual response, which is, oh, old man, you think too much. Just get her something nice. The reason why there are so many uh, gold shops here, and also this is where most of the uh, Thais come to buy their gold, is because the gold shops that are around here are part of an organization uh, that actually guarantees the quality of the gold. So people buy from here because they know that they're getting getting a, getting the right the right product, uh, and they're getting their they're getting uh, getting a, a a real quality product from here. Now, one step further too, when, when it comes to some gold shops, uh, there's some very like uh, well known and famous ones here that have actually. Uh, so well trusted that they've earned a, a royal stamp. Ooh, time to cool down with a Coke. So this is a royal insignia. So you'll see it on just proudly displayed on many a building. Uh, yeah, there's, so there's only a handful of foreign companies that have actually uh, been awarded this royal seal. And one such company is, was it? I think it's. Uh, Cartier. So royal warrants of appointments are awarded to uh, businesses and companies that have shown exceptional service and commitment to the economic and social development of the country. The warrant enables a company to advertise that they have royal approval, royal approval of distinction. And many companies proudly display this Garuda on their building. Now, after you've been awarded this uh, with this special royal appointment, the, you can't just hoist the uh, uh, Garuda up on your building. Uh, there's a special Buddhist ritual uh, where, the, uh, where the monks come and bless uh, the, the, the Garuda and are involved in this uh, special ceremony to put this Garuda on the building. Now, royal, royal warrant uh, holders tend to be Thai companies, and some examples of Thai companies include Bangkok Bank, Bangkok Hospital, King Power, Wong Thai Life Assurance, CM Commercial Bank. But there are a handful of non-Thai companies that have been uh, awarded this uh, appointment. And they include Shell, uh, Singer, and I mean Singer as in the sewing machine company, not Singer Beer. So Singer Beer is actually brewed by Boon Rawd uh, Brewing and Boomerod Brewing actually has one of these royal appointments. So Singer Sewing Machine and Singer Beer both have these royal appointments. Now a little bit of financial advice, if you're in the Chinatown area and you're looking to buy some gold, I would recommend looking for one of these um, Garudas and I would avoid shops, I would avoid shops like that one where the lady is washing the dishes. It says it sells silver and gold the D is missing from the gold and I don't think it's a very trustworthy gold shop. So that's my financial tip. That's financial tip number two from the list. Significant, uh, significant role in the history of the Chinese uh, coming to Thailand and the trade, uh, uh, the import and the export from Thailand to China or from China as well. So this Sampen market, uh, not only is it active today, but it's been active since the time of King Rama I. Because what happened with uh, King Rama I, Chao Praya, when he built the capital, 
uh, the, the royal the royal grounds uh, there were some Chinese immigrants there at the time but he pushed them south and this is the, just south of the um, royal palace which is still there today and this is where Chinatown kind of first started and it's really close proximity to the um, Chow Praia River and uh, one of the, 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 the uh, good access to the pier, piers there as well. So Sampang Market uh, you can visit in the daytime but there's actually kind of two shifts. Um, now I've done a video where I came here at one in the morning. Uh, so I'm here in the afternoon. So there's kind of like, you can do a daytime visit of Sampen Market, or you can do the wee hours of the, wee hours of the uh, morning uh, tour of the market. So this is a great place to get everything and anything. Um, as I say, it's kind of lively now, but it's actually uh, in the nighttime, this street here is, is there's a lot more markets around. So. Sundown is not the peak time for the Sunpen market. Just trying to cross the road. So uh, Sunpeng Market, this Sunpeng Lane was uh, built in 1892 by King Rama V. Now King Rama V, uh, his name was Chalalagon. Uh, this Sunpeng Market is quite different to Yarrawat Road because well, Yarrawat Road, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the, the, the rules at the time was that no buildings could be knocked down. So Yarrawat is a winding kind of a road. However, there are a few straight roads and Sampang Lane is one example of this. Now this was built after some fires. So what happened at the time, um, I think um, one can only theorize that because of the troubles of trying to build around buildings, uh, trying to build the road around buildings, uh, King Chalolokorn took some opportunities when this fire struck down some building blocks, instead of, uh, this is when the road emerged. So Sampang Lane is one of these such examples. There's, there were three major fires around this, around this area. And when the fire struck, the roads emerged. So it seems like uh, making, making uh, what, do you, what do you say? It, it, it sounds like uh, King Rama V made the most of disaster and took some opportunities to build some good roads. Um, so something good came out of the disaster, I guess. Now there was a significant event that happened just after World War II. And that is that uh, the king of the time, King Rama VIII, he came actually, he walked, he walked to Sampeng Market with his younger brother at the time, who went on to be King, come, king Rama IX. Uh, they walked here to, uh, to Sampeng Market and this event was so significant that they actually that was uh, represented on the 20 baht note. Uh, so the, of the series, there was series 15 of the 20 baht note. You'll see uh, the king at the time and his younger brother Rama Nine uh, in visiting visiting Chinatown. That's how important that event was. Now my plan was actually to come to some Pen Market and get my daughter a little birthday gift, but. I've timed it really poorly, so I'm either going to have to find another market or come back in the night time. Now, funny enough, um, some Peng is a name of one of my favorite comedians in Australia. He is Sam Peng is Asian and he's Australian and he's a comedian. He's a very funny man. He's on, he appears on uh, two of my favorite Aussie TV shows, The Front Bar, which is about Aussie rules football, and the other one is Have You Been Paying Attention? Um, now I can, uh, I can, I can tell you for sure that Sam Peng, the comedian, and Sam Peng, the market, have no connection at all. So when this, uh, when Yarrawat Road was first constructed, it was named Yufarat, Yufarat, uh, but it was actually later changed to Yarrawat, Yarrawat Market, Yarrawat, Yarrawat Market. And that was uh, named after King Rama V's son. And it actually means the young king. In 1894, there was actually an electric train, electric tram that connected Charon Kong Road, which is in the Banarak district, and Yararat Road. So the train service was started in 1894 and it ceased in 1964. No, 1968. Now, prior to World War II, uh, these areas, the Charon Krung 
and the Yararat roads. They were the busiest and the liveliest places in town. They were considered downtown. They were the hotspots. They were also uh, the roads, Yararat and Charon Krung were the roads with the tallest buildings in all of Bangkok. They had, uh, they boasted of having seven storey and even nine storey buildings either sides of the road. So uh, I've decided I'll go and get some dinner and wait for the uh, vendors to open up shop and then I'll come back tonight to Sampen Market and to uh, find my daughter, daughter a little gift. That should round off the, uh, my outing for today and tonight. lovely evening stroll along Klong on An. So this is a recently, a recent project by the BMA, Metro, Bangkok Metropolitan uh, Authority, to beautif beautify and uh, inject some uh, style and sophistication back into this area. So it is, a, it is quite nice. Uh, down this end, this is kind of like the furthest away from the Chow Phraya River. There's a bit of artwork. But I must say, it's not really the kind of artwork that pushes my buttons. I do love street, I love art, I love street uh, art, but this is not really my cup of tea. However, when it comes to art, each to their own. What I don't like, somebody else loves, and that's absolutely fine. That's fine with me. Oh, this is a bit more interesting. I like this stuff. A bit more colour. Anyway, the reason I am wandering along Klong Arn Klong Ong An is I'm heading to Safan Lek. Now Safan Lek is uh, is the location of a now closed down market, and the title of this market really intrigued me. It's called the Thieves Market, and the reason it's called the Thieves, well, most of the stuff that was sold there at that market was hot, so it no longer exists, um, and that kind of style of market, I think. Uh, Thailand and Bangkok, they, they want to kind of a, a erase it from its memory if they possibly can because um, yeah, it's not kind of the, uh, not kind of the uh, character that the BMA I think wants to portray to the locals and to the tourists. Hello, what have we got down here? Nice little alleyway. It is a very nice place, good place to come in the evening uh, for a little wander. Okay, I don't think I know who I am. This is... Ah, yes, I know where I am. Uh, this is another uh, former kind of community. It's kind of considered a market, but it's more of a community. And this, all of this land has just been recently purchased. Well, actually, not that recently. There we go. The electronics man's having a party over there. The electronic man, I think he's either having a Sunday evening party or he's testing out one of the stereo systems that he's repairing. Okay, I'm just uh, down the end of this clong here, you'll see uh, a bridge which is called Wang Nakon Kasen. Kasem. Wang, Wang Nakon Kasem. I tried my hardest there. I hope you appreciate my efforts. Uh, and it is, it's formerly known as the theme markets, mostly because stolen goods were sold there, as the name uh, hints at. Well, it doesn't really hint, it's pretty obvious. <laughs> Delightful townspeople alcove is literally what. Wang Barapa means, and that's what this area was called. That sounds like a fantastic name for a little community. So Wang Nakon Kasem was regarded as the first shopping district in all of Bangkok. The first shopping district to have it all. It, it, was, it 
it, it occurred during the reign of King Rama V, and, and in 1905, this, this was the site of the first cinema in Siam, and it was named the Japanese Cinema, due to the fact that it was operated by its uh, Japanese. Later on, this area here, the Wang, Wang Nakon Kasem area, became a market for imitation antiques, old furniture and brassware, records, and old musical instruments as well. Now, this area here in 2012, the estate uh, was sold for 4.5 billion baht to Thai Charon Corporation, Corporation. This meant that the tenants of the 440 units had to relocate and make way for the development of the Thai Charon Corporation. Now, Thai Charon Corporation owns Thai beverages, which is, I know, mostly for uh, Chang Beer. Chang Beer is the one with the elephants on the, on the label. Now, their plans to turn this, old, this prime real estate here into some new retail and uh, retail and upmarket, uh, an upmarket complex, much similar to Asia Teak. However, there's a big difference between Asia Teak and this area. Asia Teak uh, took over some kind of abandoned land, you know, it's just a factory area. But the difference here is this actually was a community. People lived here um, and to, so people lived here. So, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be, to, to change this into a, uh, you know, up, up market uh, shopping district, business district, they're going to be removing the people. So, you're actually removing, it's kind of, it, it's sad, sadly, it's the end of this community. Because uh, when these people relocate, they're going to be scattered. And so, the, the once famous uh, community known as the Wong Nakon Kasem will no longer be. So, this here is one of the entries to the area where the 440 shop houses are. And that the residents have all now been uh, relocated. So, this is going to be a future uh, development area, development site. So I'm actually very curious what it's going to look like. Uh, it's not going to be the community that it once was, but who knows what sort of uh, what's going to what's going to what's going to look like in two, three years' time. So I just stopped uh, at the 7-Eleven for a cool drink, and I was watching. I'm um, I'm just watching the. Um, there's a street market, street food vendor set up across the road from me. And I wouldn't believe it, but this place has got a, a Michelin star. It is the most unlikely place. So when I think about Michelin star, this is not the kind of place I think about. Uh, but it's actually won a, a Bib Gourmand. Michelin Bib Gourmand. Now what's a Bib Gourmand? I'm glad you asked, because I wasn't quite sure about it. So it reads here, it's not quite a star, but most definitely not a consolation prize. The Bip Gourmand, named by Bip Ben Dum, which is the friendly Michelin man. The Bip Gourmand Award is it recognizes quality food uh, at budget prices. So this one here is actually is what is a Michelin star restaurant I'm looking at. I'm reckon I should come back here and eat. I'm not going to eat here tonight, but uh, I'm going to bookmark this place and I'll, I'll actually uh, next next um, in the next video I'll be doing uh, on on An and the artwork around and I, I might uh, I'll, I think I'll stop there for dinner I think I've got a plan so I'm starting to lose a bit of light and I'm also starting to wear my battery down a bit so I'm gonna try and get to two other markets uh, before the light goes and then I'll finish up this video at Sampan Sampang market tonight um, but yeah two more markets is my ambition Wish me luck. So you may have gathered by now uh, the idea of a, a market tour. Uh, I'm trying to, uh, I guess I've just proven the, what I had in my mind of what a market is and what I've seen today are kind of very different. So uh, this market tour, I'm actually digging a bit more into the past and the history of Chinatown and the markets here and what the, the shopping areas. Uh, so maybe the title's a little bit misleading that about a market shopping tour. But anyway, I'm learning a lot through this process, so I hope you are too. About to state the obvious, Yawarat Road is very, very different at nighttime compared to daytime. 
phenomenal here. It, I, I called it uh, lively during the day earlier in the video, but now it's, um, I'd definitely call it bustling. So I've only got time for one more market. So I'm going to visit one more marketplace. Uh, and then I'm going to have a little pause and then come back and do the Sunpan market in the wee hours of the morning. So thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. I'm wandering down Golden Street in the golden hour. And I've had a golden time. So I'm at Trok Isaranafa. I'm probably saying that wrong. But I've mistimed it because where the time I'm here it's actually closed. Uh, but this this little skinny store is not a marketplace, but it's actually a narrow alleyway, as you can see. Uh, and it contains wonderful wet market and every type of food you can imagine. But not right now, not at this time of the night. Trok Isara Fun. So I've stopped here just because it's a, it's a quiet end of this, this market. Well, it's not really a market, it's more of a, an alleyway that's a bustling alleyway. So this end here is, is the, the wet market area and wet markets are, markets are traditionally early morning kind of uh, uh, events. So this is where you can get all your, your uh, fruits and vegetables and also meats. Now the other end um, is, is, is pretty busy, full of life and there's plenty of food down there as well. So this gives you a bit of an idea. This is a wonderful, a wonderful little alley that you can cruise up and down and just get a fairly feel. You get those, those there's lots of crispy pork skin for sale and you can't help but the smell. There's the uh, roasted chestnuts as well, wafting through the air. And also the Chinese medicines, you know, the Chinese herbal medicines. Every Chinatown I've ever been to in the world, you have to have that distinct, uh, distinct Chinese uh, herb smell. So you definitely get that when you're wandering around here. Time for some Chinese food before I hit Sampan Market. Uh, I've gone for the old crab fried rice and a cheeky beer sing as well. Cool vibe here, it was on uh, Yawarat Road, night time. I found a good little spot here which is fantastic for people watching as well. And now the sun's gone down, it's nice and cool. I hope I won't regret this, but I've broken one of my rules. I've actually stopped at one of the least popular places. Uh, usually I go to the busy places, because that's where I know uh, that's usually a telltale sign that it's pretty good. But here I'm the only customer, so I hope I don't live to regret it. But that's part of the fun, I guess. So when it comes to choosing a place to eat, oh, come, come, come up. My dear has arrived. Uh, usually, one of my golden rules when choosing a place to eat, I look for the busy places, particularly if I'm new to an area. So I am pretty new to this area. Uh, and I found the least busy restaurant. Um, but the reason I chose it is actually very good seats. They had cold beer, good good uh, good table and chair, so I could watch the world go by. So hopefully the food's okay. But if not, I'm going to enjoy the experience. Oh, this music's just perfect for this environment. This bird here is cooking some satay sticks, and they smell excellent. So. Satay chicken. If the crab fried rice doesn't fill me up, I might grab a couple of satay uh, sticks. So I've just finished my meal. I'm going to transition now. Uh, I'm going to sign off for now, but I'm going to return with a video of me touring the Sumpang Market at night time. As the light fades, this is my cinematic closing scene. I reflect on my market tour. I've actually learned a lot about the history of uh, Chinatown through today's tour. And in particular, I've learned a lot about gold, 
uh, and the shopping areas and also about development, new developments. Uh, but I've also just, it's just been so interesting wandering around here. It's such an interesting place, Chinatown. Uh, whether you're here at night time or daytime, uh, it's well worth the trouble to come and have a look around here. Um, I did not succeed in buying my daughter a birthday present, so I'll have to do that another time. But signing off, this has been a, uh, a great tour and I hope you've enjoyed watching.